Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about how to configure a Cisco router to support an external DHCP server. So you learned in the last lecture for small branch offices, we'll often configure our Cisco router as a DHCP server to save buying an external router. But in larger offices where we've got several subnets, then typically we'll have an external DHCP server there, maybe two of them for redundancy as well. So that's what we've got in the example here. We've got an external DHCP server. We've got the same topology as the last lecture. So I've got R1 and our PCs are in the 10.10.10 .10 subnet, but we're not going to configure a DHCP scope on R1 here. The DHCP requests are going to be served by our DHCP and DNS server, which is at 10.10.20.10. .10 .10. But we've got a problem here. So let's see what the problem is. So PC2 gets powered on, doesn't have an IP address yet. So it's configured as a DHCP client. So it sends out a DHCP request. That is broadcast traffic. It hits the switch and the switch will forward it out all ports apart from the one it was received on because it's broadcast traffic. So it will hit PC1, it's not a DHCP server, so it will silently discard the packet, and it will hit R1, and it's not a DHCP server either. The problem is that R1 is a router, and routers by default do not forward broadcast traffic. So R1 will not send that DHCP request out onto the 10.10.20 subnet, so it will never reach the DHCP server, and PC2 will not get an IP address. So that's the problem. And the fix for this is we need to configure R1 to forward DHCP requests. The way we do this is we configure it on the interface which will be receiving the DHCP request. So in our example here, the interface in R1 which is facing the clients is fast0 slash 1. So we go to the configuration for interface fast0 slash 1 and we say IP helper address 10.10.20.10. Now, whenever the router receives a DHCP request on that interface, it will forward it to the DHCP server at 10.10.20.10, and now our clients will be able to get IP addresses. So that's how we configure a Cisco router to support an external DHCP server. Let's have a look at actually configuring this in the lab. So I'm running this in Packet Tracer because Packet Tracer supports a DHCP server. If we have a look at the config on our DHCP server, if I go to the Services tab on here and choose DHCP, you can see I've configured a DHCP scope for the 10.10.10 .10 network. I've specified the default gateway is at dot one, and the DNS server is at 10.10.20.10. .10. And I'm going to give out addresses in that subnet starting with 10.10.10.100 with a slash 24 subnet mask. So my DHCP server is all set up and configured. If I have a look at the config on the PC, so I've gone into PC1 here, and if I look at the config for its interface, I see that it's configured as a DHCP client. But if I open up a command prompt on here and do IP config, you can see that it is not getting a valid IP address. That is because the DHCP request is not reaching the server. So to fix this, I need to go onto the router. I'll go onto the command line here and I want to go to global configuration and then it's interface fast zero slash one, the interface facing the clients. And I say IP helper address. Let me just expand this out. So IP helper dash address 
and my DHCP server is at 10.10.20.10. That's it, all that I need to do. If I now go back onto the PC and I do an IP config slash renew, then hopefully it's going to be able to pick up the IP address now and you can see, yes, it has. It's been given the first address in the scope, valid address 10.10.10.100. It's also received its default gateway and its DNS server. So that's how you configure a Cisco router to support an external DHCP server. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.